Good morning and welcome to One Yard Wednesday, my favorite day of the week. I'm Colleen from GE Designs and One Yard Wednesday is our show where we show you fun and creative ideas for using with fabulous fabrics at fantastic prices. And today we really have a, an awesome and unique collection for you. Producing today, somebody said, which, which P do we have today? Do we have HP, GP, or KP? We have KP. KP, there he is. Good morning, KP. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> we're so I'm, we're so lucky to have so much talent in the uh, producer category. So thank you for for being here. So let's start by uh, talking about a couple of pieces of business. First of all, the fabrics today are at seven ninety nine a yard. These are quilt shop quality fabrics. These call come from Figo, so one of our prime. Um, suppliers they're beautiful fabrics what you can imagine beautiful fabrics at 7.99 a yard will will sell out fast so the, the the fabrics won't be live until the end of the show but don't hesitate and um, I'm sorry if you're disappointed that something that you wanted sold out that'll that'll always be the nature of these awesome opportunities because the pricing is sort of unbelievable so sorry in advance and thank you for shopping in advance and all of those things um let's see please like us or share um, we really want to be sure everybody gets to see us and chat with us and interact we love that and even though the fabrics might sell out but by the end of the week let's say um there are, we always have great ideas and today we've got some great ideas. I've got a technique demo. Um, we've got some fun patterns to share, including two free patterns. So always something worth seeing on One Yard Wednesday. So before we talk, talk about my question, let's talk about the quilts on the set. Behind me is super-sized steamy windows, and I... <laughs> <laughs> we could have gone either way and I uh, so um, I, I pulled super size steamy windows because I love the vibe of this big block and it would be a great pattern for the fabrics we're showing today and behind KP we have Lupin Lupin is from the quilts of Iceland and why did you pull why did you pick Lupin I just cut some yesterday, so <laughs> you guys should come and grab some. <laughs> We've got some new kits, so I'll show you the kit. Um, it really is a beautiful quilt, and if you love lupins, uh, this is this sort of version and take on lupins is really a friendly quilt, so grab that. Well, guess what? I have a question. My question is prompted by the fact that we're celebrating Earth Day here pretty soon. And you've seen us at GE doing a number of things related to Earth Day, and I thought just raising some awareness about um, Earth Day from the point of view of textiles might be worthwhile, and we've got some ideas for things that you could do. But the question is, how many liters of water does it take to make one pair of denim jeans? How many liters of water? So I would love it if you would guess in the comments, see what you think. And, uh, you know, if you're in the U.S. and you don't know, well, you know what a two-liter bottle of soda is. We all kind of know what a liter is, don't you think? A uh, little bit bigger than a quart. But think that two-liter bottle of whatever your favorite soda is, that'll be two. So how many liters of water does it take to make one pair of denim jeans? We'll talk about that later on. All right, let's look at this awesome fabric from Figo. It's from a line called Mountains Calling. And we haven't had anything really with that sort of masculine vibe or outdoorsy vibe in this same way for a long time. And this is really cool. So the, the kickoff print is called Peaks Smoke. So it has these beautiful mountain peaks, <coughs> excuse me, with the trees and the animals running along here and it I love the almost grungy looking background here so it's a beautiful steely gray with a little bit of that almost black in there so it just gives a lot of movement and a lot of texture to this print very 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 cool I love it does do you love it AP I think so yep do you see yourself <laughs> skiing there 
Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You see my Breckenridge hat today? Yes, I do, for Mountains Peaks. <clears throat> Excuse me. So next up is, um, this is called Animals Brown. So you can see the texture of this background here in the Animals Brown. You can't see it as well in the Mountains Peak, but it's that same sort of woven looking texture. Um, and I love the animals. The, I think this, is this a buffalo? Uh, maybe this is a yak. Last time I tried to guess on animals, I didn't do so Hey, well. you know what? We should message Johan <laughs> because he knows the animals. Yoey, if you're watching, what's this one? And then we've got a buffalo and we've got a bear and we've got uh, hawks and um, just a really beautiful collection of, of mountain animals. Maybe that's a mountain goat. I'm still not going to guess. You're not? <laughs> I can't. And I can't. Uh, I can't entice you to make a guess there. Um, next up is plaid brown, and I this is a very handsome plaid. I like this a lot, and it's even prettier in person. And wait till you see how I used this and took advantage of this sort of a one-inch scale plaid. Again, it's it's a it's a very uh, sort of gender-neutral plaid, not your Christmas plaid. Just just so handsome. I really love that plaid. And after plaid, we have this fun southwest looking um, print. This is called Diamonds Brown. Again, these colors are just spectacular. The background with that same t uh, texture look uh, um, as the others. Uh, Diamonds Brown is fun, and the images in there are really, are really interesting and unique. And then we have pine trees brown. Now, it re I have this turned, actually, so just know that pine trees brown, I'm going to put it up top, um, is going to be the same orientation, directionality as mountains peaks. It's, all, it's just how I have it folded that makes it look like it's different. Um, so this, I love this print, and I used it quite a bit, and I can't wait to show you. And then the, 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 the lightest of the family is uh, called Tossed Pine Taupe. So this gives us a nice light value with the leaves and the acorns and the pine cones and just really, really fun. And uh, that pinky taupe background gives us a lot of range of value. And the most versatile of the collection is this one. This is called Seeds black and uh, obviously it ha is this yummy black background with the hints of gray and the little dashes which look like seeds even if you want to add this to your black and white collection or your gray collection seeds black won't be around very long and we added a brown too to sort of bring us full circle this is from color club this is um, color blends warm brown and that really does give us just one more piece to this collection, which I really think is super handsome. What do you think, KP? I like the mountains the most. You like the mountains the most? Yeah. What are people, are, are, is anybody guessing about the number of leaders? Uh, I see 400, okay. 100, okay. 7,600. Uh, okay, keep guessing. You're all on the right track. It's a, it's a lot of water. <laughs> okay, so I'm... Um, uh, so those are our fabrics. Next up on our to-do list this morning is, I've got a notion. Our notion today is the Karen K. Buckley scissors. Now, these are fabulous scissors. I might have shown them to you before, but I use them so much for this project, I decided I needed to give them credit for the contribution. So um, I use this size the most. This is another size I use every single day at the sewing machine here at GE. They're sharp, they're stable, the handles are, uh, the handles are flexible and soft on your hand, and I think that they're just great. Uh, they also come with a cover, so even though there's a sharp point here, it will always be 
protected by the plastic cover. So Karen K. Buckley scissors is our notion today. And oh, I should look, I should pull it down here. All right, thank you. So here's the blue handle and here's the purple handle. And we have two other sizes I didn't bring along. There's a, a, a teeny weeny one. There's one with a curved blade for trimming close to your fabric if you're embroidering. So let me show you exactly why I think this is so great. So I, in one of the projects today, I did a little applique. And when I do applique, I fuse my um, heat and bond to the wrong side of my fabric. And then I do a sort of a generous cut around the piece. And then I go in with my Karen K. Buckley scissors. I'm gonna turn this because maybe it'll be easier to see. And then I hold my scissor and just move my, my, I think this is a mountain goat now that I look at it again and again. And I'm just moving this around and the trick for me in this applique that I'm doing for this project is I'm leaving a little bit of a silhouette of um, the dark fabric around here. So when I place this on a project, it, it, all, it looks like it has an outline, doesn't and it? It's more visible in, in, um, in, in my project. So why, the Karen K. Buckley scissors are great because they're sharp and then they have a serrated edge. So it's going to hold my project really nicely and make it comfortable to do this fussy cutting. So that's our notion for today. The Karen K. Buckley perfect scissors. The medium one is my favorite today and then the large one is my second favorite and there are other sizes as well at geequaldesigns.com. So let's answer the question about the jeans. First of all, just a reminder that Earth Day is coming and it's a great opportunity for us to pause and think about this planet and what we can do. Earth Day started in 1970 and frankly I remember it because I was in junior high and I had a young and eager science teacher, Mr. Bender, and um, he made a point of us uh, understanding Earth Day, which I'm very grateful for, made a big impression on me. So um, it, on that day, 20 million Americans got involved in Earth Day. Now, Earth Day, of course, is a global phenomenon. I don't want to make, leave anybody out. One billion individuals have been mobilized um, and in one, over 192 countries. So it really is this global phenomenon. And if you go to earthday.org, you can see the initiatives that are, that are focused at right now at the moment. And there's lots of good research and literature out there if you want to know more. Um, for our purposes, I thought it would be good to dig a little bit into textiles and particularly garments. And so uh, there wasn't really an, anything there about quilting fabric per se, but I think some of the principles are the same regardless. So the answer to the question, that was a long way to get to the answer to the question, which is how many liters of water does it take to make one pair of denim jeans? And I don't want to, 3,781 liters. That's a lot of water. So That's I'm not insane. saying, <laughs> pardon me? That's insane. It's insane, yes. So I'm not saying don't, wear blue jeans or don't buy blue jeans. What, I'm, what, I, what the earthday.org site would say is just be mindful. Be mindful of your garment purchases. Couple of things. You'll lessen your footprint if you shop local. So look for items that may be made closer to home. And then even though the manufacturing took water, then they're not traveling so far. So shop local when you can. The second idea is, is swap and exchange. In fact, in the Twin Cities, there is a, uh, something called a clothes swap every so often. And you can buy it. You, not, you don't buy a pass. Maybe you do buy a pass. I didn't look at that exactly. But anyway, there's a certain time of day, and you can go, and you can bring items, and you can grab items. And it's a clothing swap. What a great idea. You might even think about that with your family, your sisters, or your, or your friends, and just say, you know, I've got f these five th shirts that are still new, and I, but I'm really looking for something new and I don't like this color anymore, would someone swap with me? I think that would be super fun. Shop your friend's closet. And then a couple other ideas. Oh, my mom would, th this is on behalf of my mom, learn to mend. 
mend, 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 mend and patch, and, and those, so those jeans will last you a long time or whatever that garment is. And finally, yeah, shop sustainable and ethical brands. So know the company, you know, that, uh, and do research. So just don't, you know, some of the advertising might say that they're a green company or they're good to employees. Do a little digging into that. There's, there's you want to, the digging part is our due diligence, right, as consumers. So buy jeans and uh, buy garments, and uh, but do it in a mindful way. Buy those quality items that you know you'll wear again and again. The most startling statistic was um, Americans. Now, Americans, I'm going to own it, we're, we consume a lot, and we are sort of gluttonous sometimes. And, um, the, and we, the average number of times we wear a new clothing item, particularly something that's fad fashion, is less than 10 before we give it away or throw it away. Seriously. Less than 10. So uh, donate, give, give away. There may be some place in your neighborhood. There was a place in where I used to work that um, would refer new employees to a store where they could go and get free work clothes. So, you know, there are places to, to clothe uh, others, which is a, even a great use of those garments. So that's our Earth Day encouragement today. Uh, and so participate in Earth Day. And um, we have another Earth Day topic next week. A little bit more fun. This one is pretty serious, but good to know. Good to know. So let's talk about our projects that we made this week. What do you think, KP? I like that idea. Where should we start? Let's start with the pillowcase. Now, you all know that we have, at GE, we have a free pattern for a travel pillowcase. And here's the travel pillowcase I made out of Mountains Calling. So I used the tossed pines. I used the animals. Now, the pattern doesn't call for this accent, but I added that in. So that was a two-inch strip folded in half, right sides together, sandwiched between the cuff and the body of the pillowcase. And I fused the Mountains Calling um, salvage on here. It do, I, I feel like it's kind of looks like, um, you know how um, sometimes a work shirt will have the name, your name on here. That, that I, that's what I was heading for. This would look kind of like a work shirt with mountains calling as the name of the person wearing this shirt. So anyway, that was my creative expression the other day. Next up is another is another pillow. It was Pillow Fest at GE for me. This is the. This is a pillow that is so much fun. And this is where I used this, um, uh, this collage idea or this fussy cut idea. So I'll simply would pull the paper off the back of this mountain goat and I'd lay this on here and fuse it. So I, this pillow is the same size as the pillowcase pillow. So it's a travel size pillowcase. So here are my instructions. Decide what pillow you want to use. Make your top one inch bigger on uh, width and height. And then I sandwich my fa this fabric, the outer fabric, between some scrap fabric and used the bosal to do a little quilting here because I thought it gave it just a little bit more body. <clears throat> and on the back, I used the trees as well. I inserted a zipper here, <clears throat> excuse me, so that I can change out my pillow case and wash it if I need to. This is an easy zipper install. My advice is always to put the zipper closer to one end or the other. It's a little harder to get the pillow in the case if the zipper's in the center. What you looking for? Oh, it's here. It's here. Um, my mo I'm saving my most fun project for the end. So there's pillow number two. And drum roll please, pillow number three. Wow, I love this. So pillow number three is the same size as the other pillows. It's the travel size pillow, 12 by 16. And I used the plaid and did some quilting on it. I'm going to hold it close so you can see that, that texture. I love how this came out. I used the seeds for my applique. And I, the applique came from Google. I searched bear paw clip art and, and filtered on black and white. 
and this is what I got. I ha I made I printed it larger so it would fill the pillow. I fused this on with heat and bond, did my blanket stitch around here, and I love how this turned out. Now these pillows, I put binding around these. So binding, I bound these two pieces together, wrong sides together, as you, you would a quilt. And that's really a fun way also, a handsome way of finishing a pillow. So don't hesitate to, to do binding. There's a zipper on the back of this one as well. Isn't that plaid cool? And my third project, are you ready for this? Gotta find the center. Let's see, ready? It's the bucket hat. Woohoo! It's the Mountains Calling bucket hat. Look at that. I love this hat. I've shown you my bucket hat before. The link to this hat, the link to this hat pattern will be in our blog. It's at Art Gallery Fabrics. It's a free pattern and it, the instructions are very easy and I love it. I used our Bozal Quilt As You Go batting for this and it's just right and I can I, you can see that I did some quilting along here love 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 this hat love it so make yourself a bucket hat um, someone was in yesterday what uh, and, and I was making this hat and she said she can imagine her mudroom in her house with pegs with bucket hats hanging and I think oh wouldn't that be cute wouldn't that be cute so that's our bucket hat those are our projects this week what do you think KP I love the hat. And I, I love you in the, the hat. <laughs> I was wearing it around the warehouse. <laughs> yes, you yesterday. were. Yes, you were. He did look good in the hat. But I do like your mountains hat, too. So. so let's look at our fabrics one more time. Then we'll look at the projects and then the source for all of the wherefores and what sows for the um, projects. So we'll start where we ended here with the warm brown. And that's just such a pretty brown, warm and soft in a great blender. And then seeds, blacks, love this, love, love, love. And then um, uh, I'm tossed pine taupe. Again, this gives us some lightness in this. And they all, I love how they all go. They really do all go well together. And then this fun ge geometric, this on point square, this is really fun as well. This one is called Diamonds Brown. And really like that a lot and very like that Southwest vibe. I love it. And probably my favorite in this collection is this plaid. It's kind of unpredictable. And um, um, I skipped one, didn't I? Uh, uh, love this plaid. Should we do trees next? Pine tea, trees, brown, there they are. I love this. I, I Jeez, this is a fun collection. And then the animals calling. These, you can do so much with these. You can fussy cut these little images. You can use, um, you can use the, um, the fabric as a whole. You can do all kinds of fun things. And then, of course, the, the star of the show, the mountain's peak that on this smoky black. I love, love, love that. So let's look at our... Um, our tools today and our resources. First of all, don't forget the Karen K. Buckley scissors. Those are our notion today, and you can't go wrong. And those scissors will last you a long, 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 long time. So good. Uh, for my fusible, I used, I'm not going to put the paper up there. I used Heat and Bond Ultra Hold. And we have this heat, heat and bond, heat and bond product at gequiltdesigns.com, and it it's really is a great fusible. Just follow the directions as they're written, and you, you really can't go wrong. We carry the Atkinson zippers in lots of colors. I brought just two colors as a reminder. The Atkinson zippers are perfect for this project because they're, they're, um, the pillow, this pillow is 16 by 12, so, Actually, I cut it, I think, 17 by 13. Well, regardless, the, the zippers are 14 inches in length, so I can easily fit that zipper in. It's an easy-to-trim coil, so the Atkinson zippers are a must-have for this project. And then our patterns. Um, uh, first up, steamy windows behind me, which I really love that, and I think we've shown it before, but I can't get enough of it. It's so versatile and a great beginner. So particularly if you are, are a beginner or want something quick and easy. You know, beginner projects are great for beginners, and they're quick and easy for 
vote for more experienced folks too. And behind KP is Quilts of Iceland, and there is Lupin in all its glory. I think I'll leave this open. And I brought a Lupin kit to show, just to show you how pretty that kit is. Good job, KP. Look at that. Now, one of the things I particularly love about our Lupin kits is each one is just a very a little different. You know, we did four that are exactly the same, but the next time we do four, they'll have maybe a different purple in here or a different background. They are all going to read like the picture or the pattern, but they're all going to be unique, and I frankly love that. Um, the free pattern today, in addition to the hat, is the GE Travel Pillowcase, and that's at GEQuiltDesigns.com. And I'll just fold that and be sure you can see that well. Of course, all of these are going to be in the blog. And a reminder, we have a class coming up. It's called the, the Sammy Sew Along. And Sammy is a fun and versatile class, uh, quilt, excuse me, and the class will be fun here in our classroom April 18th, 9 to 4, beginners, welcome. Even be beginner beginners uh, are certainly welcome for that class. And Sammy is in the books, Tripology Mixology, too, if you're looking for that. So in it, that's all our stuff. And here are our pillows and our applique and our bear paw. Where'd the hat go? Oh, look at the hat. There you are. <laughs> I, got I you love guys. the hat. I love that hat. Well, listen, thank you, everybody, from the bottom of our hearts for joining us for One Yard Wednesday. It's my favorite day of the week. It really is. We're, um, we have so much fun. And I hope you had fun, too. If you have any questions at all, of course, give us an email or give us a call. We're happy to help. Watch the blog. And then we have something really wonderful coming up for next Wednesday. You won't want to miss that. Um, and, hey, if you didn't see Tipsy Tuesday yesterday, Boudrin kicked off the strip along. So that's pretty fabulous. And uh, I can't even remember all the things going on. But it's strips and salsa. So if you've ever wanted to make strips and salsa, now's your time. Um, good deal on the patterns and some great videos. So, so, so check that out. So on behalf of KP and myself, I'm Colleen. We Grab yourself a stripology ruler, grab some fabric, and make yourself something wonderful today. And we'll see you next time.